check and check check well what why did i do check and check check that's not how i do intros i usually go welcome to synchronicity in a cool voice that is welcoming and inviting so let me start that over welcome to synchronicity this week my guest is quasi holy shit quasi i don't know your last name uh well we'll get to that in this episode because i don't know it uh quasi came by was introduced to him by a a uh, friend of mine, you may have heard of him, Michael Donovan, shadow runner of MindPod Network. You hear that bingle bong? Did you hear that sound? It's me turning the heater off. I'm up in Laurel Canyon. I'm moving about right now. I'm walking while holding this microphone. Uh, God, what a beautiful day it was in Los Angeles today. Just all days. Had a great podcast uh, with Ryan Singer, uh, me and Paranormal You. That should be out a day after this, I want to say. That'll be out. Always good hanging with Ryan. I think we're going to be going to Phoenix. Uh, we're going to drive there, it sounds like. So that's going to be fun for Jessa's thing, which we don't really know what it is. Jessa's just about the only person who could say, hey, there's this thing going on in this other state. Come to it. And just a bunch of people are like, yeah, let's do it. We don't even know what the fuck it is, but we're just going to go. So look for us there. I have no idea what we'll be doing. Um, Quazy. Oh, man. He runs an amazing podcast. Just check it out. You'll love it. Links and all this stuff. Uh, cool dude. Authentic guy. Came over here, spoke for about an hour, smoked a bunch of weed. He was hanging. He was with it. Um, and just had a wonderful conversation about life, about music, about comedy, about making it in the big city. Um, and just a pleasant guy to be around. Uh, it's always fun when you meet people who are like, gems just gems of people but they haven't quite blown completely do you know what i mean like people haven't like not enough people have realized it and that's definitely crazy so you'll see in in this life is crazy it's just crazy so you'll see that he's a special type of dude go check out his stuff subscribe to his podcast we'll be adding him to mind pod network everyone go yell at michael donovan uh for not adding people to mind pod network just this just want to rib him just getting real riled up and angry yesterday i was supposed to go over there he's like come on i got a hot tub come check it out and i'm like all right dude then it got late and there was traffic and i think like three people flaked on him and he got i bet he was upset sorry michael love you uh that's it for oh no no <laughs> that's it get the fuck out of town what do you think this is join the patreon you dinguses there's so many cool things going on there we got bonus episodes i'm about to give some bonus techniques right? The guinea pigs are on Patreon. I got a new member of the mirror technique that's been blowing everyone's mind. In my mind, it's like the craziest shit in the universe, multiverse, whatever it is. I got another one. It's an expansive one. I wish I was just like making these up. Well, I guess in some ways I am, but they fucking work and they're awesome. So I'm going to be beta testing those in the Patreon. We have live readings. We have live mixes, live mixes, recorded mixes, music. Uh, guys, I'm wrapping up here in Laurel Canyon. Not only am I finishing up songs, which I've teased at the beginning and end of episodes for the past few months, um, they're finished. They're pretty much, not pretty much done. They're mixed, right? I'm going to have someone uh, I trust very much give a listen and potentially help with some final things, but like we're done, right? I, I think, oh, should I say I know and just have it happen? Looks like maybe an album. I think there'll be a couple of singles coming out um, you know, first quarter of this year. And then I think the album is actually going to drop this year too. I think, I, not I think, I know I got enough shit. I just got to sit down and do it. I'm figuring out lots of stuff going on, but I'm, I'm wrapping up, you know, a few songs a week here. And at this pace, that's putting me on track. So just stay tuned for that. Patrons will get early access before all this stuff hits the streaming services. If you're a DJ, if you want to play it out and you want like the actual file, I will have high quality versions of that. All right, big thanks to Ned. Um, guys, helloned.com. Go there, get your magical CBD. Got my first complaint, someone saying, hey, an actual person saying, you cannot magically bless CBD products. You're a huckster. Uh, so let's fuck that guy, right? Wrong. I can and I will. And if you get it, you'll see. It's that simple. Helloned.com. Get any product there. I like the full spectrum CBD oil, hemp oil. I like the chapstick too. Who wants chaps lips? Chaps lips? Okay, sure. Who wants chapped lips? No one. It's the worst. So get chapstick with CBD in it. Bing, bang, boom, win, win. 15% uh, your order. If you use the code ARDER, oh man, 15% off your order if you use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C at checkout. That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. Big thanks to those guys. All right. 
I think when you're losing the ability to speak, that's a good time to think about wrapping up an intro. But I'm going to keep going. Fuck it. What else we got to talk about? Hmm? 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 Nothing. I have a solo cast I'm going to record right after this. I'll jam everything into there. Um, thanks for the feedback on the last few episodes, guys. It's been coming in hot and heavy. Uh, there's going to be expansion uh, in terms of topics we'll be discussing, things that are going on. Check Instagram and YouTube. For people who want readings but don't want to pay my rates now, which will continue to go up, eventually there will be a point where I'm like, all right, this is this is too high. But I, I, I we're not close there yet. So just... Those rates will continue to go up. I'm not, not going to change the reading rates um, you know, that are on the website for at least six months. So those are fine. Don't worry about that. But if you're already like, this is too expensive. Fuck this guy. Who does he think he is? Who is? Oh, gosh. Who does he think he is? On Instagram, I routinely will do like 10, 10 to 15 minute phone readings for a lower price point. So you can check that out. It's on Instagram, YouTube. I talk about this shit a lot. It's pretty straightforward. All right. Okay. I think we're going to get to the episode now. Quazy, he's the best. You're going to love it. This is a very fun and playful episode. Think Page of Cups, right? You know Page of Cups, the card, little fish coming out, cut, little playful guy. That's what we're talking about in this episode. It's great. Quazy, life is quazy. Let's do this shit. Without further ado, here is Quazy. talking about Wapakoneta, Missouri. <laughs> Wapakoneta, is that a place? Sadly, maybe. I don't <laughs> know. I, I really don't know. I, it came out of my mouth. Where are you originally from? Uh, Toledo, Ohio is where I'm. Oh. Is where I, yeah. Interesting. Say I'm based out of, but born, born in Alaska. Family really? Family moved from Alaska to like Texas and then to Columbus, Ohio, and then eventually to Toledo, Ohio. No shit. Tell I did a horrible job of introducing you by not. Tell us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Quasi. Yeah. I am a um, podcaster. I am a musician and a fellow resident of Los Angeles, California. Yeah, loving every second of it. Yeah. How? So you've been here. You just told me five years. Um, what? What drew you here? And because your podcast is easily one of the most creative that I've heard, like, nice. and, and I mean that in like a very positive context, it's well produced. There's like you draw on a lot of different kind of talents and modalities from like funny stuff to like, <laughs> Thank you, man. like the sound effects, the soundscapes are also like legit, oh, wow. like they're fucking legit. This is. Something I learned about this place is whenever you start recording anything, yesterday when I was doing a YouTube thing, yeah. someone literally came with a leaf blower <laughs> around the house. It, it's just something about it. Yeah, but, uh, so if you can't see it, it's like a <laughs> garbage truck just lifted a <laughs> garbage can and threw it at like the window that we're just kind of like here, but we just kind of like watched it. As <laughs> you're saying sound effects and my face, like my face was like, this is crazy. <laughs> The mirror is, technique is yeah. too, too on the nose. Um, but yeah, your podcast is fucking creative shit, and it's really cool. Like, what what combination of life experiences led you to to kind of produce that? And yeah, man, end yeah, up here doing a that. few different ones. A few, I mean, I I spent a lot of time in Philadelphia early on for music. Um, doing and, what? I, I was a songwriter. I worked at a coffee shop and then I was like a songwriter as well. And I had a, I had some successful shows and some success in that market. And then this uh, opportunity came out, opportunity to come out to LA popped up through a friend of a friend. And that's what initially brought me out here was like this songwriting publishing opportunity yeah. in Los Angeles. Yeah. That was the sticky little, the little cheese, you know. Like, cheese, I mean, follow so it. I was like, oh, yeah, let me check this shit out, you know. <laughs> And 
literally, like, I kid you, I was just talking with a friend about this. Like, I don't know where the last few years have gone. Like, really? But on the, this end that I've popped out in has been quite pleasant. Yeah. And, and, and I think the, the podcast came from, f- like, uh, uh, a, a musical knowledge of, like, oh, this is fun. And then, like, the comedy came from, like, yo, music's not going well. Mm. Yo, like, this, wait, that shit's weird. Yo, all the, it's like, it's, why is it sunny all the time here? Like, this shit is, like, not fun. It's, like, it was all in, like, you know, uh, friends and people that you find your community that maybe you don't have. And there's just a lot of shit that happens out here as you're trying to do whatever you're trying to do in Los Angeles. Mm. And I think that's where a lot of the podcast comes from. It's just like it's situational so and like, you know, it's just like, how the fuck do we get in this situation? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like a little bit of that, but it's, it's also just having as much fun as I can. Right. Right. And it's always just intended to just be silly as fuck. Right. I think that's silly AF. It's just supposed to be silly AF. Like that's it. And just like, that's why I try to put in these little lip noises. Cause I'm like, yeah, this is don't take this too, but it's just situational. Did you ever see a movie called uh fourth dimension? Val no, Kilmer. Okay. I, just not. watch the, I think it's a bunch of shorts, um, but the first one is with Val Kilmer. I think you'll love it. I okay. think my friend Cass, who I think Sean and Cass, they have a podcast on mine pod. Um, which I think you would enjoy very much. Um, yeah. She told me about it, but they have like the scenes with like those sound effects and stuff. And that's something about your podcast that I think is, uh, and just, I can tell you from hanging out now before we started recording, you know, fun is a really important thing these days. Um, I think as people can kind of embrace that yeah. as a thing that they do, but also can like listen to or engage with it. It reminds them that like, that is also an effective and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, effective and well, it's a worthy way of looking at the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it, there's no rules that says it can't be fun. Yeah. Like that's a genuine yeah. perspective to embody. And so, yeah, I mean, and also just to touch on like LA is so weird. It's <laughs> so, I mean, that's one of the reasons yeah. like I like it. So my, do you ever watch Black Mirror? You ever see Black Mirror? Yeah, yeah, I've seen. Right, you know the San Junipero episode with the lesbians. Des- describe it more. Wow. Where they're dead and they. Oh no, upload I have, their this is not ringing. I don't think I've seen this one. No. Well, like they, they upload their consciousness to. It's like a positive one. There's uh-huh. like a couple episodes where it's not grim. <laughs> this is like one of the good. <laughs> well, ones. Well, I definitely have not seen okay. one of those, any. So of those there is ones. one. There is one. It's called San Junipero, and basically these people die, and after they die, they have this option of uploading their consciousness to like this heaven utopia, and it's called okay. San Junipero. And I do feel like for a lot of people, Los Angeles is this otherworldly, like you die and go to this weird fucking place. And like there's it's not to say that it's utopian and perfect for everyone. I mean, there's a look around. There's plenty of fucked up shit, but it's like this alternate universe. Like like you said, like it's always sunny. It's like everyone's accepting this whole show and dance and yeah. i gotta catch my audition at this thing yeah it's and like I gotta, a thing yeah yeah it's 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 very it's i like it. it's funny it's a funny place to be it's no a wonder funny place. like so many fucking uh comedy outlets and improv and like you know or people do um you know I, I, sometimes I, i'm leaving and uh like I'm, where, I, where i work sometimes is like there's a, a fitness place and there's people doing these courses and they'll be like to call like CrossFit, you'll be like lifting some yeah, shit. Yeah, sometimes they'll be punching some shit. Yeah, sometimes they'll be like jumping jack. You yeah, know, like dude. So I'm like, that's their version of like fun in the work is it? for the weekend type mentality. This is a weekday outlet because you need this. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, is it fun though? So like, I don't know. Like, well, maybe it's doing the same things that I don't fun know. Fun that maybe you and I would perceive is like oh yeah no this is like playing all the time when it's just like (laughs) i life is that thing i think it's like life like people bring their perspective to the activity they could be doing the exact same like someone could get on the bike next to me and that's like their job so they're in shape so they can look good and feel good for me i get on it because i'm like yo i just figured out like i have way too much energy if i don't get this shit out physically yeah I'm I'm going to be a, kind of a nightmare person, yeah. <laughs> so like I just enjoy it because I'm like, oh, a I'm golden retriever. Yeah. yeah, basically, I'm like, you know, let me get this shit out of me. Let me make sure this is like 
done in a productive way, but also enjoy um, kind of the process. So I just put my headphones on and bicycle. Ah, shit, I got to get new shoes. Just I'm literally this podcast is now just a to do list for me to fucking listen to. Just like, um, but yeah, man, like people bring kind of their own mentality. Like that's why I kind of like the gym, as you can see. We were talking about perceiving other senses, like the the potentially 360 senses. Like you can see kind of what energy people are bringing yeah. to that. Like some of them, that's just like you said, their weekday kind of. This is what I do to work towards this, and some of them like this is a massive shift in my life. Like, and some of them are just like, you know, I like this. Like you said, it's just mm-hmm. their version of fun. Um, I think it's important to remind people, like everything can kind of be fun, not in like a creepy fucked up way. Like you hedonistic, know, yeah. which, you know, just yeah. loot and pillage, no, but that's not, that's not yeah, fun. You can find, um, yeah, there's a, there's a little nugget in there. Every little, or every, around every corner, everything. Were we, yeah. Did we do the, the mouse and cheese metaphor already? Uh, was that the, was that that was pre podcast? No, I don't. I think that <laughs> might have been recorded, but it's a good one. BC carrot <laughs> stick, pocket. all these things, breadcrumbs, <laughs> all these things, the Ponsel and Gretel, yeah, all the good stuff. The she foibles. didn't eat them, right? They escaped. Did they put her in the oven in Hansel and Gretel? I don't know how to answer that question in 2020, and I will not. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> so. Okay, so you had you were born in Alaska. Yeah. Uh, when did you move? At what age? I was like f- two. Oh, yeah, so you were I in Alaska was, was the first really few years of your life. Yeah. You don't There's remember pictures, them, but uh, probably. But I have no recollection of them. Yeah. The pictures look cool. For a long time, I believed, and, and this was a cruel joke that the family uh, was in on altogether. <laughs> My first conspiracy theory ever, and, and I guess this makes all makes sense. <laughs> but I was told that we had a pet moose that would come to our window <laughs> we'd feed it carrots and i just i believe that for like all of elementary school some of middle school when did the illusion get shattered when i realized how dangerous <laughs> that would be it's like a 12 foot yeah. tall fucking no, no way life is not like a santa claus novel in your brain you oh yeah what? that was my past you know what there could be a point in your future where you feed a moose carrots in the wild and you'll be like yo now it all makes sense. Oh, <laughs> now, now it yes, all makes yes, sense. Yes. Yeah, that's wow. fucking crazy. That would be cool to have like a, like a pet moose though. Yeah, it's like a sidekick moose. They're huge. You could can you, can you theoretically ride moose? Are they domestic? Can you? You can't, right? That's just in Game of Thrones, I think. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool though. Yeah, that would be fun. Most, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of cool. Like, what do you think? Like top five, like coolest animals to like ride to ride yeah yeah and okay. we can do fa- uh fan not fantastical but you know what i mean like flying pterodactyl oh furry like any beast animal mammoth things you know like whatever well <laughs> that's a good that's a really good question i feel like if you could ride a lion that would be pretty cool yeah i mean because like lions like aren't that high off the ground and it would just be like fun if you could just take out the part <laughs> of them trying to kill you do you know what I mean? You know, like a little tiny part where they're like, the fuck yeah, are you doing exactly. on my back, That's bro? exactly what I was thinking. So it's like hardest one. Cause then I would say like, then in that case, maybe like the silverback gorilla would be like, whoa, a badass. Cause like think of how much of a badass you have to be to be like, that's true. Silverback. I'm a mount it's up. It's time to ride. And he's yeah. like, oh, he's all like grumpy as fuck. Weighs like a ton. You, know? you wouldn't fuck with anyone riding a silverback gorilla. Is not the point. one bit. No. no, no, no. Think of the awful things. You know. That's a good one. So lion. That's two. I do think, like, if you could ride a dolphin successfully, oh, yes. that would be really 100%. badass. Yeah. <laughs> like, the re- animals would be fun as shit. <laughs> right. That's a good one. Two others. Definitely a bird. You'd need a bird one. Definitely some type of bird, but I mean, what bird is big enough? That's, I guess, for a pterodactyl. That, what was the av- Wasn't there like a cool thing in Avatar? There was like a fun There's little. There's a lot of cool things in Avatar. There was like a fun winged thing that you. Oh would tame yes, in they Avatar. like connected to. That thing was. Right. That thing was kind of badass. That is cool. I guess dragon would be cool too. That's kind yeah. of like a. I mean, let's be honest. Dragons are the coolest yeah. things right. ever envisioned as animal creatures. They're everywhere and like all across. Um, cultures too i didn't realize they're not all called really? dragons but like yeah. they're the similar type of like winged beast that yeah. like flies like that it's pretty cool yeah and then the last one i don't know horses i guess I'd, horses are cool we shouldn't you know just because we can ride them here 
doesn't mean they're any less cool. Like we figured wanna, that shit yeah, out. I want to take the opposite position so hard, but you're right, dude. You're right? Yeah, it's horses just like, like horses. Fucking, like we gotta give give credit. Also, credit like to. I just like the fact that there had to be someone, the first human, who's like, "Yo, I'm gonna ride that motherfucking <laughs> horse." Like that horse is like, made "No, you me. ain't." And the horse is like. Just wide eyed looking at him like, no, you ain't. <laughs> and then eventually he did. He did. And he showed and then, all his friends out too. Right. And, and like, then like they just accepted. It's yeah. like, all right, I guess these fuckers are riding. How mad now. were the other horses at that one horse who yeah, was he like, fucked it up. he fucked the whole he thing He just said up. no. He just yeah. could have been like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing this. And then no, we no, we're not doing this. Exactly. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. that That's a tough break. I think those are the five best animals. I'm pretty sure. I think we nailed it. I want to throw honor, honorable mention. Uh, the elephant. I was thinking elephant, the but I didn't a, the, say it. Like the Asian elephant is is cool as fuck. I like that. Uh, it doesn't have tusks. It's cool. It's more regal. It's smoother. It's just yeah. there. It's just tall. You know. I, I like was that. thinking elephant. That's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, and now that I think about it, camels are good because of the water situation. Yeah. That's actually just practically. Yeah, but camels. That, that's like only in the desert though. Well, yeah, but camels sometimes you're out in the of desert. context. True, true, true. I'm trying so to like, for think that of them, one reason. Like trying to think of them in like Griffith Park. Like, well, actually, that would be that'd, <laughs> I mean, that'd be decent, except they'd just be tumbling down. Some guys playing with a drone, and it's just like you know, the camels <laughs> freaking out. I was there the other day, and like, I was so captivated. Like, I love, I love when things happen. Um, I don't really like going out into big groups, but I love like observing like things that happen within big groups, and it was just. On Griffith Park is uh, it's just a trail up these like little. It's a really easy trail up in um, Hollywood. It's really, really simple to to do and to get to. Everyone's there. Guys flying a drone. No one can look away. Yeah, because it's a drone. Guys just playing with the drone, just having fun. Him and his like son, like it's like a like a kite, you know, or something. And it's everyone is watching. Everyone's just like stops their hike and is just watching and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with everyone i look up and i'm watching the drone with everybody and i'm like i'm i am swine <laughs> you know i am i'm here like this is like no wonder like he probably loved that drone or maybe the kid did so much <laughs> that it captivated everyone they're just like well, yeah, look at this yeah, yeah, like yeah his energy was so yeah cool. we're watching this love that's so like hard and badass you're like okay cool yeah, all I'm right i gotta look i at mean this it drone. was captivating in the context of things i'm like we've been on this hike for how you know the view's boring at this point you can see all of downtown la yeah it's and like all I've seen of it. like you know every you can almost see uh, and you can see the ocean so it's oh. like we're like yeah, yeah really this drone That's yeah cool. yeah on on certain um when it's not so um cloudy or something like that you can see uh the fucking pacific man oh i gotta start going to nature spots this trip for real because it's nice out here that's one of my favorite things about this out here is the geography 100 100 yeah it's so there's so many different it's kind of weird how many different types of geographical landscapes there's like forests there's these hills these mountains yeah the ocean yeah. it's like what the fuck and i feel like everything's bigger too like you have these huge. big huge the grand canyon you have like these big yeah sequoia trees and everything's just like bigger yeah. out here. why did everything get big like what was that about what was that about were there giants or something what's up with that <laughs> i don't know yeah it's really interesting i'm have you traveled a lot outside of like regional? I traveled your, an okay amount. You said you were in Spain. Yes. Where else have you been? Spain. I've been to um, Berlin. Cool. I've been to. How'd you like Berlin? I really like it. I really oh. like it. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm dying to go back. I would love to go back um, asap. But yeah, it's a really cool community. I like. It I gets been dark tra- there. I hear early. <laughs> I don't know if that it was does. like a euphemism or if that was no. just like an actual. No, I Google think it's fact. an actual Google but fact. Yeah. <laughs> like in the winter, it's like two p.m., three p.m. It's uh, like yes, yeah, oh, because it's so high up and shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how time and sun works so well. Berlin's cool. Um, Spain, like Ma- um, Madrid, is really dope. Cool. Barcelona's really dope. I don't know. Everyone there just seems like they're all like, yeah, this is. This is chill. I think, I think we're gonna call it, call it right. Yeah, we're gonna call it. All right, we're gonna call it. <laughs> Everyone's good. That's a good way and of it's, doing. It's things. like it is a way. It's a culture, and it's very pronounced, and it's it's kind of amazing to plug in. Maybe it's amazing to be fully raised and fu- whatever it is, but it is a, a very. That's interesting. It's like you can see it, and it's like it's amazing. <laughs> see, that's something that I think if you don't travel 
at all you miss that people live differently and the energetic yes. and just like kind of the vibe of the place can be different and then you're like whoa wait you can do it like this exactly. this is allowed yeah. <laughs> it's like well, oh yeah. shit yeah yeah where where have you not been that you would like to go yo i really want to go to brazil really i really want to go to south america like even mexico city sounds fun okay as fuck there's something happening with mexico I ask this question a lot. I'd say at this point, like eight out of ten, nine out of ten, it's a shitload of people eventually say Mexico. There's yeah. something going on in Mexico. Yeah. Something. I don't know what. It's a Mexican hot chocolate. It's something, man. You gotta get some more. <laughs> it's something down there because it's a it's a vibe for sure. That's interesting. Yeah, South America. There's definitely something going on. Yeah, I like that Central. whole like Argentina or like the Andes Mountains or like there's yeah, gotta be some beautiful crazy spiritual shit down there. There is because they're close to the I, they're close the to the, they're close to like down there bottom the bottom of Earth, which I don't really know what goes on in the bottom bottom of Earth. Like let's be honest, no one really does. It's just really cold and it's bleak apparently. So it's like I don't know what the fuck's down there. I've heard some things. <laughs> I don't want to get into them, but it's like you know it's like yeah. There's probably some cool shit in the Andes in South America. It's crazy that people just like used to sail around finding shit. Do you know what I mean? They're like, I wonder what's down there across this thing. We don't know what it is. Yo, that's so <laughs> it's true. It's like, what did they, what? Psychopaths. Right? Complete, you know. And then we're like surprised when they like dominate the places. It's like, you have to be insane. You probably it's, just think it's for you. You're yeah. like, oh, this land is for me. I sailed across the ocean blue. Well, right, yeah. You're like, this whole time you're on a boat, what are you envisioning? What are you, like, what are you, and then finally... The earth provides. And they're like, it's like gold. This is mine. Here's gold. What are these shit. savages doing on? They're almost like ants on a picnic. Like, what are they doing? Like, I'm trying to have a good. Like, this is mine. And that's so the mentality. Crazy. And like, that's that is literally. I can see how that. How, I can see how it works. I can see how it works yeah. now too. I've never had that perspective, but I can definitely see because it is batshit insane. One hundred percent. It is. Well, I do think psychically. A similar thing is happening now. We just, uh, I don't think the domination aspect is going on because we're pushing off into some deep waters. We spoke about it a little oh, yeah. bit. I, we, I didn't. All aboard, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. It's pretty crazy out here now. So, what, what are you envisioning for your future these days, or just like what are you having fun doing besides the podcast and kind of being out here doing fun stuff? Um, the podcast, besides the podcast, I don't know, I really want to meet, like, this is really cool, because it's like, with the podcast, I can meet people, <laughs> so it's like, honestly, I really want to meet more people, and I feel like I love this context, so, with or without the podcast, I would love to have just more, oh, thank you, Yeah, I would love to have more um community, like a fun comedy, fun, spiritual fun just cool fucking down earth people that share like minded things because in LA, like I said, it's been like I don't know where the fuck are these people. Oh, I know them. And so it's it's very like I think that 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 would be um that'd be cool. But the the only problem is it's like I don't leave the house. Yeah, there's like well, one slight problem is like I don't want to put any effort into finding these well, people. I think that's so not a problem. I think I think you find that that is actually a pretty smart way of approaching reality. Um, it's just if you're not finding the right people in the right circumstances, it feels like her being a hermit and like not wanting to go engage. But like when you find people who are doing or interested in the same shit as you, I think it's pretty effortless in the amount of work you need to put in to like put on a cool event or do something like that. Find a cool space and like share stuff it becomes easy. Right. So that's what I've been discovering. And, uh, I think that's what most people want. They want some combination. Luck, lucky for you and yes. me, yeah. they want some combination of fun, music, comedy, and then spirituality. Not in like a dorky fucking uh, blah, 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 way, but like well, being feel, authentic. Yeah, like and being like, yeah, there's weird shit going on, and we can talk about this in like a fucking normal. To feel way. Import, importance or something. I don't know. Like, oh yeah, this is. What is this? This is great. Like, you know, like that's like kind of the spirituality that it, it baseline at least you need. But no, I've always said I've because I've made I've made really great friends out here 
the friends that I do have in LA, and I've met amazing, like so many cool people, like through uh, music, as I mentioned earlier, uh, songwrite, like songwriting, um, through like this, and it's, but hanging out in LA, going to places in LA, traveling in LA is such a mind fuck. Why do you and, think like, that I, is? Um, it could be along with that whole theatrical, playful audition based mindset that LA is like a thank you a um with that kind of mindset maybe it's people stuck in traffic are extra pissed because they got to get to wherever the fuck because everyone feels so important I've always felt like in LA LA is the only place that like in a parking lot if you're backing up you have the right of way Oh, is that right? I haven't it's been. It's not true, but it's like in LA, it's like, well, I'm backing up. Everyone should stop. And it's like, no, like, oh, what is the that fuck? why like, people are weird about it when I don't stop? I don't yeah, stop for they, them. They get offended. They're like, oh, what do you, you know, who does he think he is? And it's like, who did you think you were? It's like, these are rules. Oh, you but know what's fucked up? I think I get offended when I'm backing up and people don't stop. Shit. Yeah. Oh, well, man. yeah, well, we always do the thing that we just got mad about on the road. Well, it's the pedestrian. Um, car thing too like when you're driving and like a pedestrian like just walks in front of you you're like fuck the pedestrian but when you're a pedestrian in a car like doesn't stop you're like fuck the car yeah. it's like it's classic yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. that yeah yeah the driving here and the traffic i noticed so like what i do is i just smoke weed yeah, when i drive podcast listeners we are sparking an, uh, another joint I yeah guess we started yeah, this. yeah yeah smoking sativa does it have a fun name this is this um it's called Connect. Los it's Angeles, California. Candescence Connect. I like this candescence. Oh, I like shit. candescence. Yeah. They should sponsor this podcast. Hey guys. Hello. S- are you listening? Yeah. We love your Sp- product. That's kind of my we next ta- uh, big sign of podcast success is when a weed company will sponsor me. I have a couple of bites, a cu- couple of nibbles, but that's just to me. I knew like, we were similar, man. I just I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Michael is good at connecting. Shout out to Michael Donovan, the, the grumpy curmudgeon of MindPod Network. Yeah, um, yeah, we did a podcast that was really fun. Yeah, that was a really good that was one. a fun. That was that's a how fun I got one. tuned into you. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and I forgot. What, oh, the traffic stuff. So here's what I realized about traffic: is a, if you don't have anywhere to be at a specific time, and you're going somewhere where people are cool, and you're just gonna hang out. That takes the pressure off of being somewhere on time. Second, if you smoke weed and you get stuck on like the 405 or the 101 and you're in traffic, you can smoke weed because cops are not going to come on to the fucking. Yeah. They're like, like, whoop, whoop. This is a theory based approach. Yeah. This is all theory based. Yeah. So like as long as you look around and there's no police around and you're in gridlock, guess what? You can smoke weed. Yes, it is. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you're saying it so convincingly that I'm like, I don't know if it's a theory. Like, is this legal? Like, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm that, not. Let's be clear. Uh, that would be amazing, though, in the future, if there is a you can't smoke weed at up to this <laughs> mile per hour rule, like up to 25 this miles. This is a separate lane for the <laughs> yeah, weed smokers yeah. who are so, too high, just yeah, want to go right yeah, at the speed limit. Yeah, little wider lanes, you know, yeah. like. I call that the right lane. That's where everyone wants to go. Yeah. I do like driving here, though, too, a lot because there's a lot of fun cars around. So that's fun to look at. And uh, people are relatively passive, except for the few crazy people who want to, like, stunt. And so, like, if you're just a little more aggressive, it's like you feel like Mario Kart. You're just, like, cruising (laughs) past people. It's like banana peel, banana peel. It's pretty great. Um, I don't know. I kind of... The traffic hasn't gotten to me yet. I do kind of hole up, though, but... I don't know. I think, again, if you don't have the time constraints, it loosens up the kind of me- traffic is just like someone, you know, someone who lived here for I think he's lived here for like five or six years now. And he was like, I think of it like a river. Sometimes the river moves fast. Sometimes it moves slow. And I was like, that's a mentality. If you can really embrace it. And again, it makes it helpful if you don't have to be somewhere at a very specific time. But if you can embrace that. It's not so bad. You can listen to something a little longer. Like you could do something. You could write something. Not if you're driving, but um, no. Or if you're driving, yeah. Well, even if, if you're driving, driving, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're already in the right, the right lane, smoking weed, getting high, Might draw well. something. Yeah, watch Express a movie, yourself. drive, take a bath. Yeah, you know, do all the things you need to. But do But no, because that's a real. That's a real thing. Because what about when we have self-driving so cars soon. everywhere? So soon. So what about the right lane then? Like, can we get it going? Like. We're not even driving this thing. 
You can smoke weed so in a like, self-driving car, right? <clears throat> exactly. It's like I'm not, dude. That's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be weird how the uh, rules shift. Almost like how like when drones happen. I'm sorry, I keep bringing up drones this whole time, but like you know how they have like the like a- aeronautical. Is that a word? Let's just say it is. But like all the r- the rules and the laws for the fucking air. Like you can't just like fly over. There are like, a lot of buildings. rules, and so it's like when these drones came out there. Like the legislature had to like catch up to like what the fuck is happening in reality. Why are all these people in Griffith Park staring up at the sky? And it's like, yeah, I think that's the same shit with that. Drones are interesting. They're really interesting. Oh, Robots yeah. are interesting, too. Yes. I like them, let's, though. Let's I think go. they're good. I think they're just a more like in-your-face demonstration that everything around us is a product of our mind because they're created physically by people or now other robots, but, you know, the thoughts are coming from the people. Well, now AI. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just like a really in-your-face, like, look, these are expressions of us, which is what everything is. Everyone is you yeah. pushed out, but... Yeah. Yeah. No, I... Yeah, that's... Oh, come on. <laughs> I feel like... I think I think people are up to a certain point going to be cool with ro. <laughs> I almost called them robes. Just robes just, <laughs> just hanging yeah, out. Yeah, robes. No, dude, they're totally gonna be called robes. Just robes like just hanging out like I don't know, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun and weird transition, but yeah. The, well the weirdest part is gonna be when people start having sex with the robots. Because that's bro, that's pretty soon. Bro, yeah. People are ready for that. Yeah. Like um, people are about, ready for dude, it. Dude, it's like <laughs> There's always like advancements in technology. Like think about those brave motherfuckers that have been bringing virtual reality sex or robot reality sex to life for the past 20 years and been like, hey, yo, pretty soon, like we're going to have that shit. I think because because like Fred and Steve are like working on it in the back. Like they got this shit like they're determined. I mean, I it's think such a weird endeavor. To, like, you're using the word brave where I think horny is probably the oh, word. That I am not. Like yeah, I am 100 like, percent like, like they like, are the bravest. Yeah, They're like, I got to do it. I got to make this sex robot. I got to fuck it. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are so far deep in a basement somewhere. <laughs> they have no idea. It is so but some there are probably at least hundreds of people dedicated to these <laughs> yeah. sex robots. Yeah, maybe there's a little little uh, you know they go up to their wife and got, kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we made a lot of the vaginas <laughs> real good yeah, now. That. Sculpting it in the, like the shed, like what the fuck is going on? Like this is where we live. We'll be look. <laughs> they'll be looked back on. They'll be like you know this yeah. guy. He fucking did it. He was the guy who fucking. <laughs> Yo, found what if he thing. goes to like the pearly gates and and like God is like, honestly, no one else was gonna do it, bro. Like, you know, thank you, and you can come. It was in. his perfect job. Like, hey. He fi- the person who does it that will have been their perfect job. Yep, that's <laughs> great. Well, yeah, people are definitely gonna start fucking those robots. That's pretty clear. <laughs> It's definitely clear. Hey, speaking of sponsorships, um, oh, yeah. Candescent. <laughs> yeah. Fuck robots. Fuck robots. <laughs> yeah, please. I think we're getting we're hitting the we're hitting the wheelhouse of this podcast. <laughs> so I want to talk about the songwriting a little bit because sure. the way you described it was really interesting. you you kind of like discovered it through performing, right? In Spain, you said like it like kind of clicked something into you because you yeah. were like out there, which I think is a really yeah. I think it's the best way when shit happens like that where like it just happens and you're like, oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it kind of bonks you in the head a little bit, but like gently. Yeah. It's kind of like a ping. But yeah, I um started playing guitar when I was maybe like 16 and I would like scribble down songs and stuff, but I never really took it seriously. I never, re- I never performed, never by myself. That's the most terrifying thing in the world. Totally. Mostly to me. So, but like, when I was young, it was like crazy. And so the first time I felt safe doing it was during a study abroad, my junior year in college away in Spain. Away from everything. Away from everything that I've known, anonymous. And I just convinced myself. I was like, no one knows what I'm saying. The English words. It's like, no. It's like, that's not true, obviously. But for whatever reason, I was able to like sing and just have fun with it. So like. Have fun with yeah, it. Yeah, I kind of like did like, you know, like the hacky, like scat scat, like whatever. Just do but I like, you know, Jason Mraz type shit. Or, <laughs> you know, I would I would start with that. Or, and then, like, I started, like, making it my own. I was like, this is kind of fun. And then, like, I was mentioning I was mentioning it to you earlier. The first time it clicked to me, yeah, is when, like, some like some kid just gave me, like, I don't know, like, like a nickel, a quarter or something. Threw something in, like, in this little hat or thing that I put together. 
because I was having fun. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that concept is crazy. And my head exploded. And I was like, I have to do some thinking. You know, How and old then, were you? That was uh, 21. Cool. Yeah. That's a good age to discover that yeah. as a concept. Yeah. yeah. That's, ha- that's a good one. Yeah. That'll fucking pop it open when you realize you're allowed to have fun and also get compensated for it. Because it makes other people feel fun and have fun. Yeah. Which is the point. Yeah, you are like a missing link and you are valuable. You can offer this thing that everyone loves and needs. And yeah. There you go. And yeah. everyone can do that in their own way. And it gives you That's actually the greatest the part perf- of it. Yeah. Yes. Is that everyone likes and needs a different group. Every There's yes. a market for everyone and everyone needs it. So it's like, yeah. It's uh. fucking great. So when you started doing that, how did that shift into songwriting? Like, were you writing before and you just kind of like connected the dots? Or were you like, yo, I think now that I'm learning this music aspect and now I can sing. And well, like, do I, this. I grew up listening to like songwriters like Paul Simon and stuff like that. So I started eventually when I had the ability to play and like sing with confidence. because People was, were, were giving me money or whatever. I was like, oh, OK, let me just like make something and so i just made like this long five minute song and i was like oh this is kind of like artsy like cool you know um but i i eventually i don't know started shortening the song started making them more i don't know accessible and then that's when like the the publishing opportunities popped up because they're like hey can you write like this for other people and i was like i don't know if i can but i'll try and then I learned like that was like the past like three or four years. You just say yeah. I learned so much. I just like learned, met so many different people, so many different styles of like work. Like some people just like come and like bring like a briefcase full of books and then like walk out of there with like a hit song. And you're like, what the? Like how did that happen? Yo, you know, isn't it cool how everyone does it in their own way, but it works. And they're once again back to like everyone has like, yeah. I started using the tarot and oracle decks. Oh, Dude, they're I saw so that. Okay. fucking good for lyrics yeah. and themes. Also, like finding characters and basing a character and a narrative from like mythology. But anyway, uh, so what's your style though now in terms of like songwriting? Like you, you got this kind of like uh, immersive tour through so many people's different paths. What? How? I, obviously, it influenced yours. But like when you sit down, when you sit down and do this stuff, like what's your process like? process i love music the sound of music like as lame as that sounds or whatever but doesn't instrumental sound like so i love starting with just music yes. it inspires so much and it's all different vibes and little soups that you can make like yes these like little audio mixtures happen after these sound waves are bouncing off each other it's it's amazing so it's like that always inspires something i very rarely just go well, sometimes I'm like sh- some shit will pop up in my head. Yeah. Like, it'll usually be like a fully pronounced with music. Isn't lyrics, that crazy everything. when that happens? And you gotta it get is. It, out. it is wild. Every time, still to this day, I'm like, happened to me That's this crazy. morning. That's yeah. crazy. I was just like, because you know what's crazy is like, you know, the mirror technique I was talking about. I do it now with music stuff because, like, I, have you, I'm sure you've had this happen. So I grew up playing music and I, I always believed there was a very strong and pronounced correlation between practicing and skill level. And then there'd be these periods where, like, I wouldn't play guitar for, like, a year, Mm -hmm. year and a half, and I'd pick it up, and I'd be better than I was before. And I'm like, yo, what the fucking shit is this? This is crazy. So I started using this mirror technique and these things for, like, I was like, you know what? Like, I'll just learn some new chords. I'm not going to look on YouTube even. I'll just learn. Dude, it works. (laughs) You can imagine yourself, like, it's so fucking like you listen there's a base level of comfortable you know comfortability you need with your instrument or your music but i mean these days just with like voice and stuff like that like yeah. dude it's so fucking fun you know it's it's funny you say the uh the the thing about taking a taking some time off and picking it back up because yeah that that's that's i think that's that's got to be like something that's just common it's like maybe part of the growth that happened with at the end of the day, it's like when you're picking up a guitar and playing it, you're just using your imagination. Exactly. So you need to have a f- big fuel tank of imagination. That's right. And so it's like literally, yeah, if you take some time off and let that thing happen, it's probably better than p- playing eight hours a day. To get better. Yeah, technically. yeah. Like, but playing out eight hours a day sometimes is No, it's wonderful if you're doing cool it with spot. love and you're exploring. Yeah. But I think I know so many 
technically proficient players but like they don't have that oomph and then you'll hear the person who's like maybe not the best guitar player but they fucking are basically like making sex to the sound that's coming out of it and you're like yo that sounds so good what are they doing there's just something to it like when someone like when a certain insert any famous guitar player when they play the guitar they have a style that you hear and you know and you're like like, that's how they so sensitively play that that instrument because they're in tune with that frequency a lot of this is tuning frequencies that's why i think music is one of my favorite modalities for understanding things because (laughs) it's all music it's all sound especially in this dimension and it's the precursor to a lot of things i th- oh i think it's the thing that crystallizes that liquid light it might be the vehicle that does that it turns it into those waves and i think as those get denser and denser we get this which makes a lot of sense fuck yeah, yeah i see that yeah man life is good it's really good so w- are you making music now or yeah. just what how are you putting music, it out like podcast you, putting it out how are you both how have you been releasing your music predominantly these past uh, I'll, I'll 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 par- partner with um like labels and smaller indie labels to put out some stuff. It's really tough to just put out music. Um, it's very easy to put out music nowadays, but then it's really tough for like people to like actually hear that. So it is still kind of a little bit for me. I found that I have to do these, and it's really cool people that that I what that I get to cha- work with. It's um. What have the challenges been with getting your music out? I'm curious about this as someone who's about to put out music in like a month ish. Honestly, I think it's the same thing. I think because we live in a very like online dominated society, playing by those rules in the context of I'll just put something out is so hard. Why? I think what you're able to search for, see, spread and share these days is just very cloudy and very hard. So it's like sometimes it really needs like a uh, a whole marketing push and plan sawed out all the way through. And that requires like a lot of different things, but it's so easy to put something out. But so you it's let like those people come to you is what I think and believe. Yes. You boost your signal. Podcasts are smart. So yeah. people will see this very soon. You build up a critical mass of people who fuck with you in your long form content. They're like, yo, I know who Quasi is. I know who Noah is. I know who Michael is. I know these people. Like I fuck with them. Like this, you know, and they like your music. If you have a thousand people who fuck with your music, you don't need them to buy the album like back in the day. But you need to be like, yo, if I go and do a bunch of events. Yeah, sure. I, so I have I'm, I'm working on a little system, my friend. That's pretty easy because I come from like a digital marketing background. And uh, I don't I think it's shifting into a, a be- people want to support people like I see this with Patreon. I see it with just like in general. It's just finding the right balance on how to do that. And I think what happens is you put out your music, it builds buzz, it builds buzz, it builds buzz. Mm -hmm. And then someone goes, hey, there's something here. Then they come to you and you suss them out energetically. And you're like, yo, can we really do this? Do you you understand that this is about the music? Do you understand that this is not about me just like trying to make a buck right now? Like, of course I want money from this and it's great. But like my hunch is putting out art and creativity through something like a podcast is going to become one of the more sought after vehicles just because you're building real relationships, depending on how you do the podcast. Obviously you can hide behind a persona, but you know, or several or several or several, but for the most part, people can suss through that shit these days. Like not everyone, but like people are figuring it out pretty quickly. Like who's like behind the scenes, a totally different person. Yeah. That's, (laughs) That's always, uh, not always, but that's can be a mind fuck for people. Um, or they say, don't meet your heroes. Cause it's like, yeah, unless your hero is like, you just know, like, I, I always think of this. I always joke with my friends. Like I, I really enjoy Lin-Manuel Miranda. Like, I just can't imagine him being a dick. Like, it's too hard for me to just, but like, yeah, he's the type of person, like, if he was just, you found out he's like a terrible, but you can just tell, like, there are people who are just genuinely happy and living Mm -hmm. life in a genuine way and it's not that we put them on a pedestal but it's like there's enough of those guys but yeah some of the other people and you know you imagine the best version of Mm -hmm. people who give you trouble that's the the little trick there um yeah i like that yeah that's a quick one quick that's a little yeah otherwise you're bound to them energetically 
you basically create like a Chinese finger trap. You saw you people see this with Trump, even though that's waning a little bit because the people are kind of just accepting he's not a hundred percent bad. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, I guess if he's not a hundred percent, maybe I was wrong. But people who really react negatively to him or anything, they're f- obsessed with him. And it's like, how do you not see you're expressing the mm-hmm. thing that you're bothered it's by? It's like it a tighter, fucking wrapped around. Yeah, it's like a boa constrictor, you know. It's like yeah, uh, uh, that's that is true. That is happening. People are starting to kind of be like, I don't know. I think people are starting to like kind of like wake up politically a little bit, but then also just kind of kind of like just so like what the what the hell is going on? Yeah, politics aside, like everything. What the f- like you? That's know? my favorite <laughs> thing is like people are just waking up to the fact that it's like you know what. Shit is so crazy. It's so crazy. So yeah. like the world's like what I really think is happening, feel is happening, kind of know is happening is the physical world is merging with this imaginal world, and people are getting more and more evidence of this from their sensory input. Like there's more of that like father mother son stuff. There's more of the son stuff, right? And if you learned how to stabilize your mind and your consciousness and your emotions. It's so much fun. But if you don't and you haven't, it's kind of the worst. Yes. It's like, so, you know, part of the fun of fun of it is, at least for me, is reminding people that this actually shit it can be easy. It can be fun. And um, that's not crazy. And that it doesn't mean that everything is always smooth and easy. Mm-hmm. Although it can be. It, it means that like, you can build a foundation where you're not rocked by anything. And that's super important for people to know because you can stabilize your shit and you do it by just believing it and having fun with it. That's like the, that's the gateway. That's why. Yeah, man, life is life is good. So good. Life is really good. Yeah. And that is the cool part about Los Angeles because it is blue all the time. Yeah. And it's like like this beautiful color. You're like, I, I was wondering too, because like Joshua trees out here. Have there's you been there? Big, this big geog- geography that we were talking about. Um, these big boulders, like whatever Grand Canyon. Like there's all these weird, like big, like what the fuck. And then Southern California is like this interesting climate. Yeah, there's it's spooky going on here. So spooky, like right. Everyone's like, dead. That's what it is, <laughs> man. Everyone's <laughs> dead here. It's I, fertile air because everyone's dead. What do you mean? No, I mean like <laughs> everyone is dead on Earth. Like this is this is a oh, world of you, death. You. We consciously at some point on some level is like, yo. It's like think of it like a new yeah. drug or something. It's like, yo, what drug is that? Yo, you you die there? What's that like? It's like, I don't know, man, but I'm fucking doing it. And then you go in and you're like, oh my god, I, <laughs> what? Is, I don't know where I am. What's going on? And then you kind of wake up to it and you're like, yo, I'm in this world now. So everything, everyone is a ghost. Like this is also just like. We feel this. We know this. Your sense of self, of who you are as like an individuated personality, we're constantly destroying that and rebuilding it at every second. It's just we do it so quickly, it feels stable. But if you get good at kind of like peeling apart the layers, you're like, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So we are ghosts because we're not as real as we think we are. It's just kind of like a fun trick we do in time. And, it, and you can bend this shit in the weirdest and most magical ways, and it's fun. That's why we do it. And, yeah, I know that, like, and, you know, <clears throat> I've been doing this long enough to know that people who, who feel like it's not fun are like, it's not fun. Like, this sucks. Like, <laughs> objectively bad shit has happened to me. And I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying, if you essentially just kind of lie to yourself and give yourself positive states of consciousness – watch how your reality is reflected back and then you look at those negative things not as things that were there to fuck you up but as things to show you that you can transcend something even as powerful as like a death or a painful whatever and then you're like oh my god i now know how to transcend bad shit Mm -hmm. fuck thank you bad (laughs) shit for showing me that i'm showing me who i actually am so yeah we're ghosts we're all dead but it's it's cool but there's these cool patterns that happen oh yeah Within this whole ghost sphere. It's the best. There's like these really fun patterns that happen to you just observe, watch, be a part of, whatever. <clears throat> it's interesting. You create the patterns. The pattern man. Mm-hmm. You, that's the thing. You pre-select certain things when you know it's what you really want and desire. Desire is like the springboard 
towards what uh, Neville Goddard would refer to as this fiery spiral of ascension, which I love that term. And fear also. Fear is great. This year, 2020, fear. Well, we didn't look at your chart. We never looked at your chart. Oh. Let's look at your chart. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's grab that. I was going to grab a, I was gonna grab my social media portal device. And oh, we're doing great. We're doing great. I want to pull up your chart. This is a good time for me to remember. All right. All right. Where is it? We are back on. How do I find what was recently airdropped? This is, this is why I get paid the big Oh, bucks. I sent it to your email, too. Oh, perfect. That's what I need. Let me just check that bad boy. Man, this place is such a catch that you're staying at, man, right? It's really cool, Nestled, right? It's quiet. The view. Which email did you send it to? Uh, might be the one that we were just um, just messing with. Let me check on it. That might be mine, Pod. This is good podcasting, by the way. I'm leaving this shit in. Fuck, fuck editing podcasts. Yeah, I think we should leave it all in. Even yeah. Even the parts where we say fuck podcasts. Yeah. And, and I don't give a shit about air. the listeners. Yeah. And fuck them. And I'm just yeah. in this for the money. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll leave all that in. <laughs> um, no, where, where is it? I don't see it. Well, anyway, if you are listening, he's looking for my, <laughs> what is it? What did I even send you? This, this chart. St- my, um, my star. No, there was more. It's, it was like my, astrological chart it was like there were so many things on it it looked like a it looked like a very complex chemistry homework vibe or, or something that like i don't know but noah can read them so he's gonna read mine and we're looking you for know what i can't read though is fucking <coughs> gmail me. and figuring out where it was sent to bro let me let me it's make gonna sure. be worth it this is you know this is what people have to to go through if they want. Let me make sure it got sent to here. It's coming in hot. It's coming in hot. And then tell me the email. No, now it's popping up. Uh, you'll see it. Oh, Wh- it said fail. Damn it. Okay, so maybe that's why I never sent. Which email? Lord. You so, yeah, you can sign up for courses of how to podcast <laughs> at <laughs> www. Best podcast ever slash crazy hyphen Noah airdrop except open in photos saved to downloads. Yeah. Saved to downloads. And the whole time it's a dick pic. And Boom. now yeah, Got this it. was the longest running. Okay. Most into, no, it wasn't. It was a, uh, what is this called again? Cause I've, I, I am not, I'm open to it, but I am ignorant. Your natal chart. Natal. It's when you were born. Okay. That's right. Your That's cancer rising. Your sun is in Libra. Your moon is in Virgo. Moon. You got stuff. Is this private information though? Like, should I keep this on the low? This or should is kind of like broadcast this the out keys there? to your universe. No, oh, perfect. I don't think you anybody use that against me. Yeah, yeah no. Continue. Like they could use this to basically <laughs> manipulate you, make you do things you didn't want to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, so let's just blast it's it just all like, out. Yo, this is the most detailed way of fucking with this gentleman. Right here. You have your Neptune and Capricorn, which is uh, in 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 your health in your house of health. Uh, so Neptune is Poseidon. That's why it looks like a trident here. Um, oh, cool. Like, okay. So it's like a compass. That's like mysticism, chart. occultism, creativity, music. Um, Capricorn is the path of fear. It's the devil in the tarot. Um, it's good. It's good. It's what's going on in 2020. All of these planets are like coming together in Capricorn. And so people are going to be confronting their fears pretty intensely. And if you know what to do with fear, which is move towards it and through it, you get all the gifts. So yours is in your sixth house, which is the house of health. You can think of like the houses is like set and setting of like the movie of your life. And this is health. So health starts in the mind, your emotional and like etheric bodies. God, I'm so new age. I come to LA for a little bit. I fucking start talking like a fucking right. new age guru. Got him. Um, but it is starts from there and then does eventually cascade into physical health. So you'll know you're on the right. You're your Venus in Virgo. Oh, my Venus is in Virgo too. Okay. So yeah, man, when it comes to your creativity, and mysticism the more detail oriented you are and the more you have like an appreciation and love for that 
like understanding the finer details of your creativity, that'll be your sign that you're on the right path. Also, um, if you're not on the right path, your physical health will also probably show symptoms of suffering, not in like a major way. I don't get that sense at all, but maybe like colds or like little pains or like accidents or some shit like that. But you look pretty good to go for the next year. Um, this past year was probably pretty good for you. New ideas, resolving of themes. Yeah, man, you're uh, Jupiter and Gemini. Mars and your midheaven and Pisces. Interesting. Yeah, man, you got a you got a cool chart. I'm not gonna do a whole breakdown, but the next year is uh this is gonna be a good year for you. Just move towards but fear. I guess I guess where where um where does it show the date of what you're looking at? Ah, yeah. How okay. do you know it's this year? Like, so I just know astrologically where we are, all the planets are, and they're all in Capricorn for the most part. When I say all, like the big, slow-moving ones and some of the ones that, like Jupiter, for instance, spends a year about in each sign. So Jupiter is moving through. There's retrogrades, which means they yeah. appear to move backwards. So I'm just... So I to just, me, you're showing me the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. And around it, are symbols that are, are are those all the astrological signs? Yeah, I'll break it down actually to make it more. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm just I'm kind of just trying to like get into it a little bit because I'm like, where? How does he know it's going to be this year, 2020? Yeah, like, well, it's Capricorn. It's just a major dominant astrological theme for the collective, but people have. Placements. And then is that whole revolution my entire uh, vida? <laughs> yeah, so everything Tight. moves counterclockwise in the zodiac. So these are the signs of the zodiac. I'll move through them pretty quickly for you. Starts with Aries. Actually, let's start with your sun sign in Libra. Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Le uh, Taurus, <laughs> Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, back to Libra. So there's 12. The planets on this side, these are all these colored signs. Those are the planets. And what they're pointing to is their position when you were born. This line here is called your ascendant. When you took your first breath, this is where the horizon was. This is why your time of birth is important. So yours is right in Cancer. That starts the subdivision of these houses. You see these numbers on the outside, one, two, yeah. three, four, five. The houses, like I said, are the set and setting of your life. They each represent different set and scenes of your life. The first house is the house of self. Second house is the house of value. Sec third house is communications. Four is home and family. Five is pleasure. Six is uh, health. Seventh is one-to-one -one partnerships and relationships. Eight is reincarnation. Nine is philosophy. 10 is social status. 11 is friendships. 12 is the house of self undoing. So then we have these planets. So the planets, if I say the names of the planets for you, uh, Saturn, Mercury, um, Sat, uh, I'm sorry, not Saturn, Sun, Mercury, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, um, those don't mean shit to most people. It's just like, okay, those are the name of the planets. Got it, dude. But if I say the Greek names of them, um, it starts to make more sense to people because you can think of them as like deities and energies. Okay, so sun is sun. Mercury is Hermes. Saturn is Kronos. That's Zeus's dad. He was a titan. They had beef. Jupiter is Zeus. Mars is Apollo. Neptune is Poseidon. Uranus is Uranus. That's Zeus's grandfather. That's Saturn's dad. Venus is Aphrodite. What is that, Pluto? Yeah, Pluto. Uh, Pluto and Scorpio for you. Makes sense. Uh, so these lines here that look like these weird geometric patterns are quite literally the energies between these deities. And like I was saying before, off air is like the gods are real. They're fucking real because we project them out. We believe in them enough people. Therefore, they're real. So these lines are quite literally the relationships between them. So if I say, again, in like annoying astrological talk your jupiter is in uh, tr uh is in sextile with your mars in your 11th and 10th houses it's like shut up dude i don't know what the fuck that means but if i'm like hey uh zeus is in harmony he plays he's playing nice with apollo and especially in the realms of friendship and social status your place in the world your movement towards you know 
harmony and social status in the world will give you great gifts because that's what Zeus does. He's the boon giver. He's just like, oh, ha, ha, gifts, gifts, gifts. So you start to see these relationships. Now, the blue lines are sextiles and trines. Think of that like... Uh, Think of that like a flowy energy. So if you imagine yourself in a kayak and you're going downstream, you put your oar in the in the water, and there's because there's an obstacle in your way, a little rock, and you just gently coast to the side. Mm. Red lines like that, that's a square. That's like you got to paddle upstream a little bit. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's just actually pretty satisfying if you have good upper body strength. You get to your place. You're like, oh, I did it. Great. This. That's called an opposition. That's when planets are directly opposing each other. That's like whitewater rafting. So whitewater rafting, if you've never done it before and you get thrown in a fucking whitewater raft and you don't know what the fuck you're doing, don't have a life jacket, that's going to probably suck pretty bad. So on the other hand, if you know it's coming, you take lessons, there's an instructor, you have a life jacket, you've done it a bunch, it's probably exhilarating. So these are all psychic energies. So the placements of the planets, the gods, in the houses and the relationships between them give us a pretty good energetic blueprint of themes that we work through. The most important thing about astrology or anything else is it's all just a narrative and it's a fun game. If something says like, who's a bad place, man, blah, 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 that's bullshit because yes, you're your natal chart, but you're also the entire zodiac and you can move shit around. So people are kind of coming to terms with that because they're like, once you know how to make yourself feel good, and you stay good when you read something that's like you're having a difficult time it's like no i'm not it's like what are you talking about but if you're working through shit and you don't understand why something maybe isn't as flowy or easy for you this stuff is pretty helpful in terms of an energetic blueprint so that's your chart um yeah you mentioned and just um when you were saying you should move towards something yeah and then you should you should move towards this and i i guess i just i should probably ask which way that was <laughs> Yeah, you're you should move towards your um friendships. Um any anything related to friendship to you that feels harmonious is going to give you great gifts. What is going to be probably somewhat a little bit challenging, but it's something to be aware of and it's only as challenging as you want it to be is your feelings. Your internal feelings um may hinder you with like rumination and doubt and second guessing and kind of focusing on like like kind of being detail oriented in a negative aspect emotionally which maybe may hinder some aspect of movement um that's because your moon is in virgo so virgo is the virgin but also very detail oriented crossing t's dotting i's and your moon is your feelings so your feelings it's how you feel when you're alone um and it plays nice with your Jupiter. So as you move, as you actually dive into your feelings, not like movement, but just like get in touch with them, you get gifts. But your ability to move towards them um, is the one of these white water rafting things. You just want to get familiar with it because it also unlocks your social status. Your ability to communicate those feelings uh, with movement creatively would be something as you get familiar with that energy is going to be pretty good, but not something that would have been like instantaneous. Like, Oh, I get it. I guess so easy, so easy for me to do this. But, um, and what else? Yeah. Your, your, your new ideas, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta mo constantly move towards creativity. You can't, yeah. you can't just let it happen. You got to move. And that's good. That's I, good. I got frustrated with the creativity yesterday, dude. I was like a, I was a brat. I was a brat yesterday for no reason. Yeah. I um I, I was working on a beat. I had a drum loop and then I was putting down some like keys over yeah. it and I got inspired. I was like, oh, I hear something. I want to sing it. Yeah. I start singing something. It feels good. And then it didn't feel good. And yeah. then I was yeah. like, oh, but wait. And then mm -hmm. I got, mm -hmm. I was getting like PO'd. And I was like, all right, I'll look for different sounds. None of the sounds that I was going through were working. And I was getting PO'd. You like, just kept, I just kept getting PO'd. And I was like, this is interesting you know how to stop that is you just catch yourself and you go no this is amazing and then you'll uh, you might do something by accident and then you know when you're making music and then that accidental thing happens you're yeah. like yo what the and fuck is that perfect yeah. you ever do it where like an that accidental is, thing happens then another thing happens yeah. then another thing happens you're like yo i just made the best thing i made That's by accident how I make my podcast right yes that, so it's, that is it's very it's very like when you when you first see it too like when little accidents fit perfectly into certain that's things, reality you're like what 
okay. And then you start just realizing it's not little accidents, quote unquote, fitting into reality, Correct. quote unquote. It's like. Correct. It's you That's reality. Like shaving away the chiseling away the fucking stone boulder with the face underneath it all. Michelangelo in your life. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what he said he did when he made. You ever seen his statues and stuff? He said that he didn't make the thing. He removed yeah. the part of the boulder yeah. that wasn't the thing that it needed to be. It's yeah. like, yo, make me this thing. And he's like, let me just take this away. That's what it is. Yeah, man. Uh, Which is like the most fascinating way to look like at like to look at the world. Like these these wild thinkers. And there was this other this architect this architect from Spain, this guy uh I think I know Gaudi, yeah. He was like this weird he was like kind of like an oddball, but it, like his way of thinking, like he the would space. do all of his models yes. like that he would build, upside he down. would hang them upside yes. down and they're just dangling. He's like, This makes sense to me. And everyone's like what? It's like, the, why are you, you know? doing? He's like, no, it's but like he supposed would make to be these, like this. Like, you know, it, like everyone has a different process, but everyone comes to something very cool, and then he pops out with these fucking, you know, these wild parks that, like, that the ones that I was like busking and performing on, like when I was in Spain. Right. He he makes the Sagrada Familia, this beautiful fucking cathedral in the middle of Barcelona. And I don't. It's like it, it's like this crazy like. Yeah, human spirits. Vi- it's vibey. It's very. It's cool. pretty vibey. It's pretty vibey. Um, I have to go to the bathroom, but we're gonna get through these last few questions that are quick. Um, this has been amazing, man. Great yeah. podcast. Nailed it. Oof, what Home a fun, run. What a fun day. Uh, yeah, and it's just getting started. Um, I don't, know, I don't what, really know what that means, but well, yeah, you I know, think, it's early. But yeah, oh yeah, it is. That is crazy. I woke up so early today that you get so many like good hours in the morning oh. before then now, yeah. now it's the middle of the day and you're like oh huh, i'm still on while. east coast time so i have a superpower i go wake up three hours early and go to sleep at a normal hour here it's oh. the best yes uh highly you're recommend winning it. you are in the you are in the lead yeah um so what's your favorite color um royal blue nice what's your favorite number um that one's tough for me, but I would say 13. Oh, yeah. Good answer. You, well, why is it tough? Because I've had a lot of... I have a cra- okay. I have crazy relationships with numbers all the time. I see, I'm see. i very good at remembering. Like I remember like all of my friends' numbers from... What other uh, numbers do you elementary like? Elementary school. And then like I'll always see the same three-number patterns two, everywhere. 222? Two, two? Um, 333? Three, three, three? What do you see? 777? Seven, seven, seven? What are your numbers? There's like sevens fours and threes a lot fours have been popping up for me a lot uh what uh we'll talk about numbers next there, time yeah it's but but it is wild but i, I would say 13 and that's why it's hard because there's, it. there's so many good ones <laughs> that's my favorite number too i mean i'm i love them all but 13 what's good. your favorite integer <sighs> what's an integer like right. positive right positive right. integer Believe me when I say this, I cannot answer my own question. Positive, I have no idea. I have positive no idea. integer is my favorite integer. Um, <laughs> what uh, What's your favorite animal? Probably the river otter. <laughs> why is the Why the river otter? The river otter or like the orangutan? Because <laughs> they oh, because they're just like hundred percent the cutest. Like when they do like their when they're Are like the playing otters around. That rape though. One of those. Well, things obviously, rapes. I I I haven't seen this footage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty or sure, dude. Wait. All just, I'm thinking of is okay. So I can't just to be clear, anymore, yeah. just to be clear, <laughs> just to be clear, I think if you Google River Otter, they're like particularly rapey. They are <laughs> yeah, like known for it. Yo, my animal fact file book. I when could I was be a wrong. Kid is it's bunch? It's just a bunch of mansplaining. Yeah, it, it man. Probably is just they're a just bunch like, of like yeah, the otters are the best. Yeah, yeah, look at these pictures of otters <laughs> uh, in North America. <laughs> last question. Um, What's a practical tip that's helped you in your life that you could share with people listening? Can be anything. Opposite action. Ooh. Yeah, do shit that you don't. Uh, you just like kind of power through it, and there's like there's like a goodie on the end of it. That I like. That I like. Knowing what resistance really is, which is yeah. an invitation to go through it. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Quasi, this has been amazing. Thank you. My pleasure, man.
Thanks for listening to that episode. If you like Quasi, go subscribe to his podcast. That's a really easy thing to do. There are links on this episode, the notes, the places, the things, the people, the things, all the stuff. Ah, I'm making a lot of music, guys. A lot of guitar music out here. Listen, at the end, we get to be private time together, right? No one's around. It's just you and me. Let's just talk about what's going on. I'm making guitar music, and it's really good. And I'm writing down the chords, and I'm putting the lyrics in, and it feels really good. There's something real special about Laurel Canyon. It's a great place to make music, and I'm really excited to share it all with you. But first, first things first, let's get this album out, guys, right? Oh, it's going to be a good year. It already is a good year. If fear is coming up, I'd be remiss if I didn't point this out. If fear is coming up in your relationships, in your life, in your sense of self, let it go. You're all good. Nothing can rock you. You're fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Cool. All right. I'll see you in a couple of days with, no, nope, a few days? I don't know, three or four days with the solo cast. It's going to be a good one. I can already feel it. All right. Bye-bye. Happy Imagine.